Good morning, uh, good uh, afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 340. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, uh, answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions community uh, on uh, Facebook. It's Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group, yeah. With us tonight, we have uh, Tim Kappa. Tim is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he's also a Google product expert uh, in the Google My Business uh, community. And um, Richard Hearn. Richard uh, is uh, proud to call himself an SEO. Uh, he's based in Thailand. Uh, he looks after uh, upper echelon sites around the world. Um, he's um, um, intending to do some work on his website at uh, redcardinal.ie as soon as uh, uh, he gets enough time from, uh, as soon as work eases up. Anyway, let's have a look at uh, our first question for the night. Um, uh, it's... Uh, Titled, I have discovered uh, something uh, interesting. Um, it's from Alan Kazak. He said, I'm relatively new to SEO, but recently I have discovered uh, something interesting on one of my competitors' websites. On each local citation page, they have a page for the services they provide that are unique to that city. For example, Say they offer the following services, uh, painting garages, painting doors, uh, cleaning windows, and uh, uh, cleaning eaves. They have a separate page for one of the cities they operate, say New York, uh, and then they have special pages for painting doors in New York, uh, painting garages in New, New York, etc. When I look up the pages on Screaming Frog, uh, SEO checker, I noticed that these pages are for painting doors, uh, these pages for painting doors in New York are non-indexable. Does anyone know why they are doing this? Well, they probably created them in a sense of um, originally to try and rank for painting doors in New York. Uh, what they ultimately came across then was, I mean, we don't know when exactly they were created, but what I suspect is they realized they were literally just duplicating their painting garage door pages. Um, um, <clears throat> and they were just being treated as, you know, thin, thin content and not being, um, you know, very well uh, positioned. Um, they may have also just, you know, heard about Panda and thought, are oh, we best, you know, no index these. Um, that's if they are no index. I don't know if you checked, but you said it was from Screaming Frog. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it just sounds like duplicates of their actual service pages. So um, that was probably the reason why. Um, they, you know, they could actually revive them. I mean, without seeing them. I don't know, but they could potentially revive them uh, as long as they make them unique. So like painting garage doors in New York shouldn't be the same as painting garage doors in wherever, like, I don't know, Houston or, or something. Um, they should be unique. You could make them unique by adding which particular contractor would service that particular area. So that would, you could, you know, you could bring in that. You could then display the team, uh, the garage door painting specialists in New York, the team that deals with that. Um, you could, um, you know, you could make them unique in, in quite a few ways. Um, but I suspect without looking at them, they were pretty much all boilerplate and they just weren't working and when panda rolled along they got a bit concerned with that and no indexed them cool tim 
Um, all right, uh, I, I think we can call that call that um, um, a wrap on um, this question for Alan Kazak. Let's move on to number two on our run list from Travis Pereira. Uh, it's titled for SEO is the first URL better than the second. For SEO is the first URL better than the second. Uh, for example, www.website.com slash shop dash hats dash men. Um, www.website.com slash men slash hats. Thank you. Well, for me personally, the question would be, <coughs> does this only sell men's hats? If it only sells men's hats and women's hats, then it would be shop hats men, shop hats women. Um, if they sell other men's clothing, I would go with the men's forward slash hats because then you can also use forward slash jumpers, forward slash, you know, you can you can categorize them all nicely. That that would be my, you know, take on that. Yes, it, um, well, the thing is that first uh, URL, uh, it would um, mean that if you like everything would be at the root of the site, whereas the other other way they're, they're, they're going to be um, folded down um, and easy, easier for people to follow. I agree with you. Okay. Let's um, have a look at the third one on our run list. This one from Jose Fontanez. Um, it's titled, No Index Directive Will No Longer Have Effect. Um, since the No Index Directive um, will no longer have an effect on the robot's text file, how will you address uh, to use No Index to directories or folders? An important uh, thing to mention is that we also want to disallow these directories. Um, in a, a Google Webmaster blog post, I read that if I want to place a no index uh, on meta or HTTP header, having a disallow on the robot's text, um, the no index will no longer take effect. Uh, and he gives the link to um, Google's update. Um, um, they've suddenly discovered the Lord and they're going to uh, try and uh, uh, reintroduce standards around uh, uh, the robot's text file. Um, comments, guys? I, I'm just thinking one thing. I've never used the no index in robots.txt, so I'm not quite sure how it works. I'm very curious, what did Google do if they saw a, a file or, or a directory that was marked no index in robots.txt, but it was also marked disallowed? I wonder which one they, which one did they, uh, did they observe? Yeah, I, I, I uh, shoot me if I'm wrong, but I, I think, um, the um, um, the ro ro robots text uh, file just blocked um, the robots access to the to 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 the um, to the page to the URL. Yeah, that's what you'd expect with disallow. But I'm just curious if if they were if they supported no index previously, what did they do when they saw both a no index and a disallow to the same resource? Did they, like, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't crawl it because it's disallowed, but I'm wondering, did they now index it or could that content still be indexed even though they didn't crawl it? No, oh, I see what you're saying, yes. Like, yeah. like technically, like, the, the answer to his question is, can I place a no index and disallow at the same time? The answer is no, because for them to see the no index, they've got to be able to actually request the resource. And if it's blocked by disallow, they can't request it. So... They're mutually exclusive now, for sure, 100%. Yeah. 
Okay, before we move on to the next, I see uh, Masataki Wasa has just joined us. Uh, Masataki uh, uh, is a webmaster based uh, in uh, the UK. He lives in Wimbledon. Uh, he's a, a Google top contributor uh, on the um, um, Google AdSense uh, community. Yeah, sorry, a Google product expert on the Google AdSense community. And you can find Masataki on wasaweb.net. Our next uh, question is um, number four on our run list from Scott Clark. Um, it's titled, Ranking is Bad with Some Keyword Cannibalization. Um, he, he, the question begins, um, scenario for Colin, brand.com with multiple product uh, top-level domains. Um, multiple product. Mm, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, top level domains product one.com, product two.com, etc. Um, ranking uh, is bad. Uh, some keyword cannibalization is clear. We are considering advising the client to merge all of these product sites to their brand.com TLD as subfolders to concentrate their SEO effort. Um, my question, how much is Google's entity graph mitigating this issue? Uh, is there markup we can use to achieve a sort of same as effect between these product x.com sites and a brand.com site? Edit, we have organization schema on several of the sites. Yeah, so, you know, using same as, you know, I've used same as, um, as a matter of course, in all my um, sort of structured data markup for organization or local businesses. I have never seen the same as that I've marked up working in the knowledge panel for that business. Um, whether, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if it would, I just, I can't say that I've seen it and I can't say, so if that would, if that would work. Do you mean for the social, social profiles, is it? Well, so, so in, in the knowledge panel, you get, you get different things displaying. So firstly, obviously the socials, but they, they, they um, degraded that so it's not necessarily appearing because um, they then they said that you don't need it now we've removed that as a social markup but in terms of businesses within uh with different um if for example a uh, business has x amount of business the same businesses within the same area then we, we, you know, we're marking them up the same as, uh, or if there's um, a specific citation for them that works well, let's say, for example, Yell, we mark it up the same as, uh, but I've never seen anything reflected within it uh, in any way, shape or form to say that that, yes, is being understood and actually in some way being displayed. But yeah. So for me, I, I'm saying the way we use it and with local business, I haven't seen it reflected. Mm. But I don't know in terms of a large organization kind of structure. Yeah, I don't think like this, this whole question about ranking is bad and how much does Google's entity graph mitigating the issue. I, I'm not sure that the, the knowledge graph will be coming into it that much you know, I, I, it may be, it may help if Google recognizes the products and recognizes the the producer of those products, but probably not. So 
I think I, I put an answer in here later on in the in the, the comments, but the first thing I think he needs to do is he needs to figure out does Google actually know about these products and about the company that produces these products. So you can do that by searching the knowledge graph to see do they come back. So you can basically search the knowledge graph and see do they have instances of those product names. So that he could do that, but whether it's going to change the ranking, even if they don't and he manages to get them to pick up those entities, I'm not sure that it's going to necessarily affect his ranking. It sort of it, it depends a whole lot on what those products are like. I mean, if they're very generic, and if the names are very generic, I think it would be uh, it may be quite difficult for him to rank for those products. If the names are very unique, you would assume he should be ranking anyway for those names. Um, there are certainly ways to to try to use structured markup to associate products with the producing companies, but. Like I say, I don't think that even doing that, it's probably not going to have a huge impact on his rankings and probably his idea to migrate everything under a single domain is probably going to have a better outcome than him trying to focus on the knowledge graph. The knowledge graph might be helpful, but probably migrating to a single domain is going to help Google a lot more to understand where those products come from. Thank you, Richard. Anybody else? Yeah, in a, in a sense, it. I think Scott's preference is to migrate. I think that sort of comes through. I think in his post and in the answers, um, I think he's asking a question, this question in case that that migration is not an option. The problem, I think, is that looking forward how sustainable is that strategy going to be compared to say migrating and and it's i don't know how to put it it's, it's really hard i think for you know uh, to see how product one product two would appear in knowledge graph and how that would continue to appear and whether the knowledge graph appearing in knowledge graph if it does so is going to lead to um more sales or whatever the ultimate outcome that we want so i think it's a very tricky one Yes, it's um, it's difficult to be, to, to be certain of, of your ground, isn't it? Um, but I, I, um, I, I well, my, my my feeling would be that it's silly to have um, all, all of those different um, so, domains. Uh, one, there's the management of, of, of each of those domains. It, it, it's you know that's work time that could be devoted to doing something useful yeah so let's say the brand is tim's fluffy elephants and then you know the product one would be pink fluffy elephants and product two might be purple fluffy elephants and you know you can you trigger knowledge graph for pink fluffy elephants as a product yeah i think that might be a, a, a that might be a little bit wild in the assumption of, of what, what it is. You have to assume that these products, if they have their own domains, that they are their brands within themselves. That's what I would assume. Like I think most big companies that would do it this way, it'd be sort of like a bad example because they don't do it. It'd be like Microsoft and having a separate domain for Office and having a separate domain for you know whatever else they do, various other products. And they yeah. do have some standalone domains, but they tend to keep everything under their main domain. And yeah. that's what I imagine this is because it, it doesn't really make sense beyond that. I mean, if you're a small company and you're not well known and your products aren't well known, it, it doesn't make any sense at all to have separate sites for them, I think. So that's what I assume has been done. But yeah. I'm thinking more sort of something like Procter and Gamble and people like that when they have different. Yeah. Brands, yeah, they have. I don't know how many different toothpaste brands. 
you know, you look at you look it up, and it's all the same company in the end. Yeah. Like they have different um, branded toothpastes, and they will have individual websites associated with those brands. Um, but then the, that assumes that brand is well established, yeah. and, and having multiple uh, brands within the same market, in a sense, is crowding out the competition. So yeah. if that's the case, then it makes sense to keep those brands. But then here, the in indications are that um, they aren't ranking well. And and product one, product two may be slightly more generic yeah. than perhaps is, you know, uh, well-established branded goods. So I think that's where the issue is in that if the products are or can be brand can be brands on their own and can be sustained into the future then you know it would make sense to have a sort of big corporate site and then different brand sites but if the products aren't capable of being sustained in that fashion and then people may associate the product with the brand, the corporate brand. So, you know, instead of having an individual brand that is sort of well established, it is some company's product. Yeah. Then there's an association with the brand and product. So sort of there's a linkage. And in that instance, sort of putting the product on its own, on its own side, on its own domain, may not be the best strategy yeah it really depends on the the context doesn't it i mean p and g they have all those brands but they actually don't want people to know they own all those brands because they people think that these are competing brands but they're not really at all yeah and ota is another example yeah yeah of course Google, by the way, the knowledge graph, my experience has been that actually they're not always very good at figuring out what is a product under a particular brand and who, who owns that product and also what that product is in terms of what category it puts the product into. Um, and sometimes you can actually tell that by doing searches for things like you know suppliers of product X and they might put up a carousel and when they put up a carousel, that carousel is coming from the knowledge graph. And when you start to dig into those carousels, then you can start to see, like you might see, even when you look for a brand search and there's a, a brand knowledge panel, and then they might say, they might show what people also search for and it's other brands, competitors, that's coming from the knowledge graph. And then you can see what the category is that Google has assigned that entity to, and you can see what other entities are in the same category. So you can use some of that stuff to figure out how well Google is picking up your products and your brands. And, but just don't be surprised actually, if it's not doing a very good job of it. And isn't there an issue with products that the carousel might be from shopping rather than from this? So didn't you get the ad? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. the knowledge graph. It, it, it's more of a generic type of categories you'll get, you'll often, you'll get this, like, I'm, I'm not, not disputing it. Absolutely, you have to be careful. I'm not talking about the shopping carousel, but there is a carousel that sometimes will have brands in it as opposed to products that you, that you with prices. These are like brands. So a lot of the yeah. SaaS software, if you do like, you know, uh, you know, best CRM or whatever it might be, you'll see these, you may see a carousel, you may see a brand will come up and there'll be a knowledge graph brand on the right, and it might show people also searched for or similar something that's down low and there might be four or five logos and you might have a link where you can say click more and that will then show you a carousel which is actually yeah. according to the knowledge graph so that's what i'm talking about there so it's certainly not the shopping stuff but yeah no so i'm just wondering you know what kind of qu queries people we putting in you know if you put in so you know, if you want to know about airline company you put an airline company name on the in Google, then it it usually does trigger the knowledge graph and then you know the the carousel, so they're showing all different other airline companies. 
Um, but if you're looking for a specific product rather than for brand, say, mm -hmm. um, isn't that likely or likelier to trigger the shopping carousel in which sort of, you know, so that would be ads based, wouldn't it? The, the shopping carousel. So I'm yeah, wondering yeah. how. Go on, Master Taki. No, so I'm wondering, in the sense that you know, if you are sort of trying to rank for a particular product, whether the knowledge graph route is really going to have that impact. I'll tell you what, right? So I just did one now just to try and figure one out, okay? And I did online accounting software and it gave me a people also ask best accounting software for small business. And when I put that in, when I click on the people also, I'm going to do a search, it actually gives me, it's definitely a knowledge graph. It's coming from the knowledge graph. It's accounting software slash small business, which is their category for whatever this is, this type of software. So, there can definitely be, like, it depends what you're in, okay? Like, I'm very familiar with online software because it's just an area I, I work with. Probably 95% of my work is with SaaS companies and online software. So this may not apply in every, like, to consumer goods or whatever else or, uh, you know, travel or, you know, there's different, it may apply differently in different, in different niches. But for this, for on, like, for software and online stuff, you can certainly trigger a carousel or results within the SERP that are coming from the knowledge graph. And when you see a lot of like featured snippets and people also ask, they're also highly related to the knowledge graph. And then you're in an area where actually getting some of this stuff, your entities, you know, indexed in the knowledge graph could be beneficial. So it really depends on the context. I mean, we all we know is that there's a brand and product A, B, C, D. We've no idea what the, the industry is or what the product type is. So, but there are definitely cases where it can be useful, I think. Yeah, but then that raises the question that you don't have to have a separate domain for each <clears throat> product in order to appear in Knowledge Graph, right? So it's not as if you have to have separate domains for each product in order to appear to be categorized and then be put in a Knowledge Graph in that way. No, no, absolutely not. You could have you know, different products under the same domain and then appear in the knowledge graph of different categories. Would that be possible? In fact, I, I would argue that it's probably easier for Google to determine that the product belongs to a brand when they're all sitting on the same website. So the way it's set up now may actually be working against them to some extent in terms of the knowledge graph and Google actually understanding what's going on here. And I think Google... You know, a lot of the, a lot of what when they're building the knowledge graph, I think it's 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 obviously very complicated, and I don't know whether they trust all of the structured data that they see on websites. Like obviously they don't because it's so easy for people to either make errors or to try and spam things. So I think moving everything on a single website, like if the knowledge graph is an area that is of interest to the industry they're in, moving migrating everything under the same domain may be quite helpful in terms of Google understanding that this website belongs to this organization and these products are featured on this website and therefore also are associated with this organization. So, yeah, I, I think that there's plenty of reasons why migrating to a single domain could be beneficial for, for most companies in this situation. Well, I, I think um, we've um, covered this question well. Um, I'd like to point out um, people like Stockbridge, uh, Trustflow, and uh, in other um, questions, uh, people like Michael Martinez, Michael Stricker. Um, uh, these people uh, answer questions uh, on our, our Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group uh, through the week. Um, and uh, you know, their contribution is uh, invaluable. Um, am I okay to move on to our fifth question on our run list? 
Okay, let's, let's do it. Karina Kumakova um, has a question. It's titled, What to Check Before Buying an Expired Domain? Uh, site Evaluation. A client is considering buying uh, domains from companies that just went bust. Uh, how do you evaluate these sites? Uh, how much SEO benefit would we generate? Um, brackets, traffic slash rankings. Um, and therefore, <clears throat> how much would these domains be worth? Um, does anybody know where to uh, start here? She provides more details in one of her comments. If you scroll down a bit. All right, let me see that. And one more, I think, yeah. Yeah, that's what the client wants to do. Okay, let's have a look. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, so I, I think so, Richard. Yeah, uh, um, Richard um, is having uh, a bandwidth issues, um, which is, um, uh, really unfortunate because uh, Richard um, has a lot to contribute in this area. I'm not sure. We'll see if you can hear me now. I'll, I'll just, I mean, the, there's a couple of things here just to mention on this, okay, is that if, if a company, from companies that just went bust, um, you've got to remember that if you take on their domains, um, you may also have people coming to you later on asking you for X, Y, and Z, like, please update my details. And why does my product X not work anymore? So just be prepared that there's some downsides to, to, to picking up domains from expired, like expired domains from companies that have gone bust. Um, I still frequently, every, every day, I get multiple inquiries, people saying, um, where do I register my product? And I'm, I'm there, well, like, look, I've owned this domain for four years. Um, so obviously you're looking for something completely different. It's I don't know what I can't help you. Um, they mentioned about SEO benefit from domains. I think there is some you can get some SEO benefit from from expired domains, as long as what was on them and the links that you're redirecting in some way that they're redirected in a in a clever way. If you just get by domains and redirect everything from those domains to your homepage, I'm not quite sure that you're going to get much value out of that. Um, if you can redirect it like a page to page basis, you might get some value if the pages are very, very tightly aligned, as in the old page that was on the site and your page. Um, but one thing you should think of, not just SEO benefit, is traffic. Like if the companies that went bust are in the same industry and the same like target market that you're in. And if those domains still get traffic, which they may well do, especially if they're older domains, that people may still go to those companies not knowing that they're gone bust, um, you can actually pick up the traffic. And the traffic can be very valuable because it's highly targeted. And it's traffic you'd pay quite an amount of money for to, to get via AdWords or, or, other, or other channels. So it can be worthwhile looking into the traffic and most expired domain marketplaces, they'll give you an indication of how much traffic. It, it's normally a very iffy figure, but if you see that there's thousands or tens of thousands of visits per month to a domain um, and it's in the same niche as you, as long as it wasn't owned by someone else in the intermediate period between the company going bust and you looking at it, um, you can maybe pick up some of that traffic and you might be able to convert it. So. For the investment in a domain, which is could be like ten or twenty dollars, you may be able to get some decent traffic from the domain. That's just something to consider. Consider.
Okay, um, Richard, th th thank, thank you uh, very much. Um, we've just been joined by Micah Fisher Kirshner. Micah is on the uh, west coast of the USA. He uh, um, is um, uh, director of uh, SEO for Turn River Capital, and he's also uh, the president of uh, an SEO meetup um, close to Silicon Valley. Is that a good description, Richard? Don't tell me I'm alone. Um, okay, let's um, look at um, the uh, sixth question uh, on our run list. Um, this one from Saurab Rawat. Uh, it's titled, Can I use FAQ Schema for blog slash article pages um, at the end of uh, content? Point out, Richard Hearn um, um, did speak to him through the week. Yeah, I think Richard covered kind of the, the main theme. And the other part of it is whether or not you want to look at um, uh, how to schema. So if your content might be more appropriate for that, if you have a step by step process, that might be a better, more likely uh, structure that you can get. It's funny, he, he, the guy answered, people are using this trick. And actually, that's what it is. It's a trick. And I think very soon they're going to drop the hammer on this because I think a lot of people are abusing this. Um, they're like, the guy is saying that what he said, look, if I add three to four question answer on the same blog topic at the end to get click through benefits, I mean, Google, if Google is showing people this, this FAQ within the SERP, well, the first thing is Google actually doesn't really want to send anyone to your site. They want to keep people in the SERP. That's the, that's the intention from their point of view. Um, but if he does get click through and people get to the article and they start looking at the article and they're looking for this FAQ content and it's down the, the base of his page, it's not going to provide a very good user experience. And my guess is that Google has sort of opened a little bit of a can of worms with this and it's going to come back. And I'd say they're just going to come down very hard on the people that do what this guy is trying to do, which is basically abuse this. So I, I wouldn't go this route because it might work now, but who knows what's going to happen very soon. Yeah, I just think the, the issue is, is you know, coming down hard just means they lose their snippet. Um, because it's not necessarily, uh, you know, I'd be surprised if they actually de-rank or penalize uh, the actual ranking of sites as a result. True, but I wonder if after a while, so there's a couple of cases where what they're doing is like the, like they're, they're saying, right, yeah, we'll just remove your site's ability to, to, to rank for this particular feature. So they take away the snippet in the SERP, but yeah, I'm just wondering if, as they add a few more, if these start to accumulate and they start to look at sites that are abusing these and maybe they do a bit more, who knows? Well, they already have, you know, for so with aggregated um, for, for reviews. Reviews. Um, yeah. And everybody was just slapping them on every page. <laughs> so they brought out the manual action for spam, for, you know, for, for, for spammy structured data markup. Um, and if they bring that in for this, essentially any FA until you fix where the issue is, you your site just won't display any FAQ structured data. Do you know might they have automated that? Because I work in an industry that is very, very it's it's very reliant on reviews. They generate reviews for third parties. And I noticed that in certain certain like so basically every competitor was putting a review schema on their category page 
which was, uh, you know, it was basically them putting as if it's a review of the category page when they didn't have it at all. And all the competitors were doing the same thing. And a couple of, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks or a month or two ago, basically overnight, everybody lost the review, the reviews, their star ratings for their category pages. And I just wonder, maybe have they automated it in some way? Because, you know, it could have been a manual that they, they basically did a manual review of all these sites because it was in a particular country. So it might make sense. But I wonder, are they starting to automate it? Because, you know, they don't like to do manual. So, no, no. Yeah. I just think uh, without actual harder penalties, it's not uh, it's not exactly a disincentive type of thing. Well, you know, I think part of the reason why they don't, they're not going to they they probably you're probably right that they won't introduce harder penalties is because well they want people to use their markup because they want people they want to get this content into their SERP. I mean. They don't. They can't be accused of scraping. Hmm. To them, yeah. So, and we all know that, like, they've had this the last few years. All they're trying to do is actually make Google the end destination. They don't want the end destination to be third-party sites. I mean, that's pretty obvious from what they're doing with with the SERPs. So, yeah, you're probably right that they're not going to come down harder. But at the same time, it gets to a point. There's always a threshold for them where they say. Enough is enough, you know. You're starting to you're starting to hurt us, as in we're losing money because people are getting pissed off, coming to our SERPs and seeing this crap, and then, yeah, they drop the hammer. So we'll see what happens. Or they, the other thing they can do is they just they turn around and they go, actually, this didn't work. Let's deprecate this, like they did with various other structured markup that they have deprecated when when they found it didn't work for whatever reason. Sure. You know, I, the other thing I don't understand, why doesn't this guy just create his own FAQ pages if he thinks that this is a good way? Why why just add it to the end of an article? Maybe maybe build a new article which is based on FAQs. It's probably because his he wants he already has a page at rank that so he wants to just get the additional uh, FAQ layout to show up. Yeah, this is where this all falls down, though, from like a, a user perspective. Like, if, if something ranks, I don't know. Maybe you can get the best best of both worlds. I don't know. Okay, I, I think um, we've covered this for Sorab. Um, I know if I click this button, um, we're only going to see one thing, and that is thank you for watching, which means that uh, we've done it again. We've answered all of the questions asked on the uh, SEO, uh, dumb SEO questions Facebook group. Um, we'll be back um, at the uh, same time uh, uh, next week. Um, to do uh, this uh, all again. Um, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Richard Hearn, um, Tim Kappa, Micah fisher Kirshner, Masataki Wasa. Um, uh, it shouldn't be that hard, but I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. Um, the, the contribution on these recordings uh, is immensely valuable. And also, I think um, um, people like Michael Martinez and Michael Stricker uh, uh, and Stockbridge Truslow and and all the uh, the other people who um, did chip in and help. Um. Anyway, we'll be back uh, next week. But for now, it's uh, good night.